So today, for all the great nines, we're going to break down what the EduBlog is, how to use it, as well as a course that you're currently enrolled in called COL. Do not go to edublog.com as you will not be able to log in, but rather go to myriverside.sd43.bc.ca slash where you will be provided a login page for all Riverside accounts. So to find your URL, let's say the student's name was Jason Smith and he began Riverside in 2021. He'd go to myriverside.sd43.bc.ca slash first name, so Jason, last initial, S, 2021. So once you are on the Riverside uh, login page, you're gonna go into the username. You're gonna put your first name, Jason, last name, Smith, so I'll put S, and the year you started Riverside, 2021. And then you are going to put in your password, which is a word plus three numbers. After you've done that, you're gonna press login. Accessing your teacher's blog is a little bit different. It's not their first name, last initial in the year they began Riverside. However, it is the initial of their first name followed by their last name. So my first name is Brian, so it is B. Barisal. For Mr. G, his name is also Brian, so it is B. G. So on Mr. G's page, he has the courses he teaches, E11 and 12, E9, and the tech team. Mr. Berzel's page has a little about me section, sports he coaches, and the classes he teaches, where you can find more information if you're enrolled in those courses. After you've logged on and initialized your blog for the first time, you're going to notice that they have some standard tabs at the top of your page. An about me section which you can update with information about yourself, the Riverside Way, explanation of digital learning, core competencies, capstone project, grade 9 with the courses you're going to be taking, grade 10 the courses 11 and 12. Think of these as file folders where you put your online assignments when you eventually start completing some. to the side of your page, as well as school announcements, a link to the library and their resources, a link to my ed where you can find your grades and assignment scores, Office 365 login, school calendar, teacher websites, where you can find technology support, as well as a link to the Eddy, which is the school's online newspaper. One of the unique things about your blog is that you're able to customize it. So you can do this in two different methods. You can either press customize at the top, or if that does not appear, you can go underneath Jason's blog dashboard. From the dashboard option, you have several different features. If you go down to appearance, you can change the theme of your blog so it looks completely different. However, if you're going to change the theme of the blog, out of the 292, make sure you use something that is mobile friendly so that you can access it from a smartphone as well. So 274 of these are mobile friendly. So what you can do is you can select one of the themes and activate it. Once you've activated it, you will notice that it will change your blog. If for whatever reason these tabs disappear while you are activating your blog, what you can do is you can go up to menus and go down to the very bottom and press automatically add new top level menus to this. Sometimes some themes delete these different tabs. Also, in this option here, 
you can add widgets to the side of the page. So um, some of these widgets will include adding a calendar. So if I want to put a calendar in there, I can just drag it right over into the area that I want it to go. So primary widget area, so I can put it there. If I wanted to add a, uh, let's say a search bar or um, lots of options on here. So I could just drag any of these widgets over and they will be added into my blog. However, if I am going to change anything, make sure that you take a look at it first to see that it's exactly what you'd like. Also in here, I have the background option. I can go to background and I can select an image and put something else in the background. I can change the site identity. So instead of calling it Jason's blog, I can call it something else. But remember, it is an educational blog, so you wanna make sure that people know whose blog it is and that it is professional. I can change the tagline, so that's the line right here. I can also go in here, change the colors, the header image, that's the image along the top, background image, so lots of options here to really make this blog your own. Now that you're done the customization of your blog, you might be ready for your first post. You're going to go up to the top and you are going to press new or the plus sign. Post. It's going to bring you to add new post. You can put a title in here. I'll just write sample post. I can add media and have a photo in here. Otherwise, I can put text. Or I can put a photo as well. Wherever you press add media, make sure that your cursor is in the correct spot where you want your photo, and then you can go through files on your computer to add them in. I can highlight text, bold it, underline it. I can uh, change the alignment of the text, the font or the color. Um, as well as the size over off to the side here. Um, when I am done that portion, I might want to categorize this. So let's say this was an assignment uh, for Math 10. Okay, click Math 10. If there's a tag that we want to use in order to find it, maybe we call it Math Sample Post. No space is needed. And you also don't need um, the pound sign in the beginning. So I press Add and you will notice that I have my tag added. When I'm done my post, I have three options. I can either save the draft, I can press preview, or I can publish. Once it's published, I will then go to view post and you will see the sample post. Pause the video as you'll now have some time to experiment with your EduBlog. You can try logging in, creating a post, customizing. Once you're done, we'll begin explaining to you what the course COL is. COL, or Coquitlam Open Learning, is the district's platform so that students can take courses online. So the course you are taking within COL is actually titled ADL 10 or Applications of Digital Learning 10. The course will have you explore the various learning fluencies in creating technology projects throughout the year, meanwhile assisting students in becoming educated and responsible online citizens. All grade nines here at Riverside are enrolled within the course, although it gives you grade 10 credits, four credits exactly towards your high school graduation. The course is a blended course, meaning Part of it is online and part of it is done in person. There are two teachers for the course, Mr. Robinson and myself, Mr. Beresall. The course entails six total assignments and all of these assignments will be posted onto your EduBlog. The first one, the digital footprint, will explain to you today. You will have two assignments that are related to your English 9 course, two that are related to your Science 9 course, and we'll do one later on in the year called the Community Connection. So what is your digital footprint? It's the information about a particular person that exists on the internet as a result of their online activity. So for example, the pictures they post, the tweets they tweet, 
um, the accounts they may follow and like online, what they comment on, um, everything about that person that you can trace online as part of their digital footprint. So used in a sentence, let's take a look. There are several ways to ensure your digital footprint doesn't damage your reputation. So some of the, your online activity could actually impact uh, how people perceive you. Let's explore more by taking a look at a video clip by NBC10 titled, Your Digital Footprint May Be Unflattered. So one of the things we always talk about is digital footprints. You're in the social media class at UMass Dartmouth. When you apply for a job, we already know that something like 70% of human resource professionals will now search every candidate's name. Students stunned at what they learned about themselves. And this third row will focus on Megan. We conducted an experiment. The class searched for the digital footprint of these student volunteers. Employment history, we found her LinkedIn account immediately. And what they found? As you can see, we found some of her pictures that were very public and from her birthday, fun, you know, even though she thought she had taken the measures to keep everything private. Honestly, I really thought that I said everything to private because I am trying, I'm a senior, so I'm trying to get jobs. From Facebook to Twitter and beyond, plenty of photos, party pics, some risque, barroom snapshots, favorite alcoholic drinks, where they are at any given moment. Um, I was a little surprised how easy it is to find my family. And what does Brian's online image say about him? That he is two totally different people. He is, he seems pretty studious, but uh, outside he's definitely a partier. And he didn't post most of the photos. His computer automatically accepts tags, which are photos sent by friends. It definitely shocks me. You'd never know Brian is on the Dean's list. I think that students have gotten so comfortable online that they don't, they don't see things anymore. Professor Nora Ganim Barnes is the Director of Marketing and Research at UMass Dartmouth and considered an expert on social media. If they apply for a job, any um, HR person can find out so much about them. From Twitter to Facebook to Google. If you're in the market for a new job, maybe you're applying to school or even a mortgage, how do you clean up your digital footprint before it's too late? When you envelop yourself into the social media world, whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn, and you create connections, you give up a lot of control over what happens about you. Attorney Brian Lamoureux has written and speaks about social media and the law. He stresses, you've got to filter what you put online. Anything you put out there is fair game. Be protective and selective. Control your network. Uh, if you have a thousand friends on Facebook, uh, you have relinquished some control. Be vigilant about your privacy settings. They can change without even you realizing it. If someone writes something negative about you online, you can fight for your reputation. Emailing the blog owner first is a good first step. If the comments are open, feel free to comment. If you're willing to engage in a back and forth with someone who can control the medium, feel free to do so. In addition, Google and other search engines allow you to request changes in your profile. But be warned, it's a lengthy process that isn't guaranteed. Back in class, student James Geronda just removed his Facebook page. That's a guarantee. I applied for a job and I got it, and then I found out if you have pictures up of doing whatever you're doing on campus with the job that I had, you could get in trouble. Experts agree, research yourself before someone else does. And I think everybody, everybody needs to Google their name just to see because I bet that very few people know what their digital footprint really looks like. I'm Dan Janig, NBC10 News. Your first assignment for COL is your digital footprint. Your goal is to reflect on your digital footprint. You'll share how your digital footprint can impact your future education, grad school application, job, and career prospects. With this assignment, we want you to describe the key messages around digital footprints and learn to share with your peers how you'll be able to manage your digital footprint responsibly. So the instructions have four steps. Number one, you're gonna watch the video. You can watch the video at this link, but we just did so in our own uh, video itself. Uh, you're going to reflect on your own digital footprint. You can Google yourself, try to picture how your footprint comes across to others. And number three, you're going to answer the questions below, questions one, two, and three, and you're going to share these answers on your EduBlog in a post. Uh, your title is going to be Digital Footprint, your tag will be Footprint 2021, and your category will be ADL10 Assignments. 
Uh, the fourth step is you're going to engage others uh, with your post uh, eliciting and responding to comments. So you're going to try to get some uh, feedback from others. Uh, your three questions include, how might your digital footprint affect your future opportunities? Give at least two examples. Question two, describe at least three strategies that you can use to keep your digital footprint appropriate and safe. And the third question, what information did you learn that you'd pass on to other students? How would you go about telling them? So you're gonna answer these three questions in your post. Uh, you have a couple deliverables, so a couple ways that you can select um, format-wise to answer these questions. Option one is a video response, one to one and a half minutes in length. Option two is a poster or infographic, um, and it will include both text and graphics answering these three questions. And option three is an article. So you'll answer all three questions in your own words, and you'll also include six photos minimum taken from Pexels or Google Images. And you'll need to um, make sure that you reference in a work cited if the photos are not your own. So you have three options. Your assignment is due Wednesday, September 22nd. Uh, needs to be posted on your edgy blog. That's how you would submit it. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact the two teachers, Mr. Berzal or Mr. Robinson. Uh, possible digital tools you might want to use is uh, YouTube, iMovie, Sway, uh, Easel, Prezi, and anything in Office 365, including PowerPoints, can be used. Uh, but make sure that you sync it with your computer first to upload it. And um, uh, some examples uh, we'll go through um, right here. As for the feedback, uh, you will be getting marked out of 15 based on three different categories. Message and media. So what is your conclusion? And how did you show it? Uh, analyze. Did you find key information to support your message? And audience, what do other people think about your presentation? So, like I said, if you have any questions, you can email Mr. Berzal or Mr. Robinson. When I'm ready to start my post, I'm gonna be logged in on my blog. I'm gonna go to new and I'm gonna go to post. And my title for the post is digital footprint. So, digital footprint and I'll go down click ADL 10 assignments and my tag is footprint 2021 I'm going to add that and now I have a few options if I'm doing the video response I'll go to my YouTube link this is not my video but I'm just showing you as an example I would go to the share option and I would go to embed I would take the embed code, which is right here. I would copy it. And I would go to the text tab right here on the EduBlog, and I would paste it in. Once I go back to the visual, the video will appear. Let's say, for example, I am not doing the video response and I am doing um, the article. So for the article, I need to have answers to these three questions. So I can just copy each question right into the blog, paste it in, and do it for the other ones as well. And the last one. What I could do is right underneath these, I can answer the questions. So I would write my answer here. And I would do that obviously for the other ones as well. And what I could do to separate the questions from the answers is I could just bold my questions and leave my answers in regular font right there. For this one, you also need to include six photos minimum. So you're going to put your cursor where you want your photo to appear. So let's say it right here. I would then go up to add media. And in the add media, I'd go to upload and I would select a file from my computer to put in there. So let's say, for example, um, I was using maybe the core competency one. I could go right here and I could go insert into post and it'll appear right here. Once it appears, you can go into the edit and you can change it from a thumbnail to any size. So I'm just going to go to medium and I'll go update and there's the image. 
This is not my own image. So what I would need to do is at the bottom, I would go to a um, work cited or sources and write either one and you would put the links to the pictures that you found at the bottom. When you are done, uh, you'd press publish, but let's say you are not finished, you can go to save draft. In the save draft option, you go to posts, all posts, and what will happen is you'll have a digital footprint as a draft that you can go back in and edit. And then when you are finished, you can press publish. When you press publish, you can then go to the top and press view post. And there is your digital footprint. Once you've logged into Office 365 and in particular Teams, you'll locate the team off to the left hand side that says COL Applications of Digital Learning. At the top, you'll find the Assignments tab. Under the Assignments tab, you'll have an assignment called the Digital Footprint. There'll be an option right off to the side here on the student view that will have a link button. You'll put the link to your EduBlog post that has your digital footprint on it. Once the link is inserted into this area, you'll press the Submit button.